pill okay it is the most abundant leukocytes okay it makes 60 percent of total leukocytes or total wbc or white blood cell like i already said in another video that never love my ex boyfriend neutropil lymphocyte mono, uh, monocyte eosinophil basophil neutropil is 60 percent half of the 60 is 30 percent is lymphocyte monocyte is five percent a sinophil is three percent like you see three one two three and one two three e is same like three so a sinophil uh, is three percent basophil is near with a and so basophil is one percent now uh, this 60 percent of neutrophils are actually 10 percent is in circulation this is in circulation and 90 percent are marginated marginated mean which stuck are attached with the vascular endotheliums are called marginated now this 90 percent marginated neutrophil 95 percent are mature and 5 percent are blast okay now structure the structure is multi lobular nucleus if you see there is one lobe another lobe another lobe so multi lobular nucleus so neutrophil have multi lobular multi lobular nucleus and that's why neutrophil can also be called poly marbo okay nuclear leukocytes are pmnl okay so now they have a fin granule so that's why it is called granulocytes i already said that granulocytes leukocytes are you will remember it from nab neutrophil eosinophil basophil nab okay and lymphocytes are monocytes are a granulocyte they don't have granule so the granules which is present in neutrophil are pink granules okay now the granules is consisting of primary granule secondary granule and tertiary granule primary granules the first formed granules are called primary granule which contain acid hydrolysis and myelofaraxidase the mpo myelofaraxidase is going to be very very important okay now the secondary granules secrete substance into extracellular matrix and tertiary granules for the adhesion of leukocyte to other cells and their phagocytes okay now overall now leave this okay overall the neutrophil contain acid and alkaline phosphatase myelofaraxidase mpo nadph oxidase peroxidase and defensin okay so the two most important enzymes of neutrophil are myelofaraxidase which can also be called mpo and nadph oxidase the myelofaraxidase is going to produce bleach which is called hypochloric acid hocl uh, hypochlor okay hypochlorite sorry hocl hypochlorite and nadph will produce free radical now let us explain action or functions of the neutrophil okay action or function of the neutrophil is actually the primary phagocytes of our body now see here the phagocytes in our body are monocytes macrophage eosinophil and neutrophil among all these the neutrophil is going to be the primary phagocyte of our body as it is the first line defense okay neutrophil is the first line of defense now it peak in injured tissue within six hours okay it stay up stay up to three days now the action is going to be occur uh, because of these two most important enzyme myelofaraxidase enzyme and nadph oxidase enzyme is going to kill bacteria via oxygen dependent intracellular killing mechanism now let us explain first mpo myelofaraxidase this is hydrogen peroxide the hydrogen peroxide can be produced by bacteria it can also be produced by nadph oxidase now this hydrogen peroxide with the help of myeloperoxidase it will form hypochloride which is also called bleach or we can say hocl hypochloride and chloride will attach with this so this reaction is happening because of this enzyme myeloperoxidase enzyme now this hocl or hypochloride can only kill gram positive bacteria because the wall of the gram positive bacteria is exposed okay they don't have capsule they don't have extra wall so that's why the wall is exposed and that's why it's going to be the hocl is going to kill gram positive bacteria now why gram positive bacteria because their wall is exposed but why they cannot but they cannot kill the catalase gram positive bacteria it cannot kill the catalase positive bacteria why because the hydrogen peroxide can be converted into water with the help of catalase enzyme which is produced by catalase positive bacteria so then this h2 2 is not going to form hocl because this is going to convert into water now the catalase positive bacteria i already uploaded another videos on uh, uh, on my channel about regarding catalase positive bacteria so step r is klebsiella e coli salmonella shigella aspergillus pseudomonas 
they are going to be catalase positive bacteria. Now, if someone is deficient of myelopharaxidase, they cannot pump HOCL. If they cannot pump HOCL, they cannot kill gram positive bacteria. And the patient is going to die because of the gram positive infection. Okay. Now, NADPH oxidase. If you see here, NADPH oxidase, they are going to form the free radical. And the water, the oxygen is going to convert into free radical water. Okay, with the water, it's going to convert into the free radical with the help of NADPH oxidase. And the free radical can kill all else. It can kill gram-negative bacteria. It can kill. It can kill catalase-positive bacteria. It can kill the uh, the encapsulated bacteria. Okay, it can kill everything because it's have a, uh, energy. It's high in energy, and anything which come in the in uh, in the way of the free radical, they will uh, they will introduce their energy into them and will kill and will kill them. Okay, now this is oxygen. When one electron bind with oxygen. And with the help of any DPH oxidate, it will pump superoxide. The, now, when another electron is attached with the superoxide, it will pump hydrogen peroxide. When another electron is attached with the hydrogen peroxide, it will pump hydroxyl ion. And when another electron, it will pump water. Okay. If you see, now this H2O2 can also be pumped HOCl. It can also pump hypochlorite or bleach with the help of myelopharoxidase enzyme. Okay. Now you see here. This is oxygen independent killing mechanism. This is oxygen dependent killing mechanism. The oxygen independent killing mechanism, they are using lysozyme, defensin, lactoferrin, hydrolytic enzyme. And now you see the myelopharoxidase and NADPH oxidase. These two are using oxygen dependent killing mechanism because they need oxygen. For the free radical formation, we need the production of oxygen. Okay, you see here, this oxygen is going to form superoxide with the help of NADPH oxidase. Then this superoxide is going to form hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl ion, etc., etc. All these are free radical. Okay, now this hydrogen peroxide with the help of MPO, myelopharoxidase enzyme, will convert this H2O2 into HOCl. This is hypochlorite, okay, or which can also called bleach as you see can as you see here okay so the free radical or superoxide is the free radical hydrogen peroxide is the free radical and hydroxyl ion is the free radical now the summary the summary of this is actually you can see now the uh, neutrophil is actually a primary phagocyte of body it's weak in injured tissue within six hours it stay up to three days it is the first line of defense it is a part of humoral immunity. I already uploaded another video on cell mediated and humoral immunity. So watch that. Okay. The myelopharoxidase enzyme produce HOCL and they can kill gram positive bacteria except the catalase positive bacteria. NADPH oxidase which can kill all cells. They can kill gram negative bacteria. They can kill encapsulated bacteria and they can kill catalase positive bacteria. And accumulation at the site of neutrophil accumulation at the site is going to form abscess and fuss. Okay. Myelopharoxidase is going to form HOCL and it can kill gram positive bacteria except catalase positive bacteria. And NADPH oxidase can pre produce free radical and they can kill anything else. Okay, so hope you will remember it now.